<clears throat> As many of you know, I was an ex-Christian. Um, I've been seeing repeated powerful visions of both, uh, mostly Lucifer, um, and um, I had Yehoshua, the Messiah of Israel, speak to me in my mind, and he's sitting here next to me, and he told me to read the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verses 6 through 16, and he said, focus on the word of God, and your iniquities shall be destroyed upon you, and I will show you the way to the kingdom and the eternal heavens. Um, this is the one that I have spoken about in my one of my past visions before. The one with curly brown hair, bright blue eyes, um, who looks Middle Eastern with a very pointed nose. He told me not to mention um, the, the visions I've been having lately, but to, to just read um, to read this from the Bible to the nations. I guess we'll see what happens. And um, the reason why I'm going to go ahead and, and read this is because we I seek answers from the infinite, true Creator of all of existence, and I know that's beyond the God of Israel and beyond the gods of duality and the creations of duality which are good and evil everything that has a capability of committing good and or evil or bad choices with free will is a creation of duality itself or a god of duality an angel demon of duality whatever it may be and so as i seek my answers every single day for the past seven years non-stop and I have devoted my life to seeking the divine will of the eternal creator. Um, not knowing exactly what it is, but having many, many ideas and what I could do with my talents. Having not done so yet because of uh, physical ailments, sicknesses, colds, um, dealing with neuropathy, nerve disease, um, and consistent visions. Not knowing exactly what to do with. And so that is why the purpose of me creating the YouTube channel. He told me to just not talk about the visions at this moment, but to focus on this scripture here, Proverbs 20, chapter 24, verses 6 through 16. For by wise counsel you will wage your own war. And in a multitude of counsels there is safety. Verse 7. Wisdom is too lofty for a fool. He does not open his mouth in the gate. Wisdom is too much for a fool. Too lofty for a fool. And so many human beings on this earth are foolish. And they think they, that they know what's right. And they think that they know what's good and so many people don't know he does not open his mouth in the gate not sure what that means in verse 7 but verse 8 he who plots to do evil will be called a schemer verse 9 the devising of foolishness is sin and the scoffer is an abomination to men i've been a scoffer towards the bible before and i've looked i've been looked at as that verses 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Don't faint in the day of adversity. Fight the good fight. Because that's what it says. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. That's verse 10. And then when you go back to verse 6, for by wise counsel you will wage your own war. And what's the wage of, the, of our own war is the war of our minds, the war of our thoughts, the war of um, what we believe or what our false opinions may be, and the war of not knowing truth and seeking truth. Yeah, not exactly knowing where the truth may be or where the, tr where the truth dwells. And then we go to verse 
11. Deliver those who are drawn toward death. Deliver those who are drawn toward death and hold back those stumbling to the slaughter. Ooh. If you say, surely we did not know this, does not he who weighs the hearts consider it? He who keeps your soul does not know it. Well, that's with a question mark. And he who, and, and will he not render to each man according to his deeds? My son, eat honey because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to your taste. Bees are what helps the pro produce of 75% of all plants. And because of bees, that is the reason why all of existence is alive right now. When you do the research of bees, they are being exterminated and they are now illegal. If bees become illegal and if bees are killed off, not only will there not be honey, we won't have produce, and everything that exists and that is alive will die on this planet Earth without bees. Seventy-five percent of all the population of creation that is on Earth will die without bees. On my Facebook channel, there is, um, you can donate to the Bees Foundation and help save bee populations. So as it says in verse 13, my son eat honey because it is good. Well, we have to make sure we have bees here on this earth and not being exterminated so that we can have honey. And the honeycomb which is sweet to your taste. Verse 14, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be to your soul. Knowledge and wisdom be to your soul like honey that is good. If you have found it, there is a prospect, and your hope will not be cut off. I agree with that. I wonder why Christians make God, the God of the Bible, look like a God that doesn't want us to have knowledge and wisdom. Why do they suppress knowledge and wisdom in the church and within the community? And... They're so stuck in, this is right and this is wrong and what you say is false and everything is the devil. But that's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying that you can seek knowledge and wisdom. What is knowledge? You can get knowledge from all sorts of books, videos, um, uh, thoughts, ideas, leading into facts, leading into creation. What is the knowledge of, of creation? Oh my god. The church deceived me. Even the most sacred church that really, truly believes in Christ. They're, they're so lost. I'm, I can't say I'm found right now. Even with Yehoshua speaking to me. Even with Christ standing right beside me. I don't feel like I'm found. I'm still searching for the divine will of the eternal creator. It's not an easy search to know for sure what God wants from you or what or to know which God is the right God there is no right God in mythology they're all gods of duality and so it ends up like a cycle a cycle of pain, a cycle of suffering when really there's only one eternal creator that's above all this but to, to reach the eternal creator we have to get through these gods of duality that's God of Israel, that's a God of duality, which is good and evil, because he created good and evil. But the eternal creator is perfect, and there is no evil within the eternal creator. And then you go back to, uh, go up to verse 15. Do not lie in wait, a wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Do not plunder his resting place. There's every race and color and nation of people have done evil to another race, color, and nation. There's so many wicked people that go into the dwelling of, of, of a righteous area and cut those people off 
and it says, Do not lie in wait, a wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Do not plunder his resting place. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. But the wicked shall fall by calamity. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him. And he turn away his wrath from him. Well, I'm going past verse 16, but that's fine. Verse 19, do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the wicked. Do not be jealous of a wicked of wicked people. That's what the Bible says. Do not be jealous of wicked people. Don't fret over over evildoers. Don't what is fret though? Do not fret over evil doers, as it says in verse nineteen. Verse twenty, for there will be no prospect for the evil man, the lamp of the wicked will be put out. In verse twenty one, my son, fear the Lord and the king, do not associate with those given to change. Well, see, people need to change if they're corrupted. They need to become righteous. People need to change to become better people, better individuals. So I'm thinking that's not what the Bible means. Maybe it means don't, don't, um, go, don't side with people that are righteous and then turn evil. Those who are given to change, I think that's what it might mean. For their calamity will rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin those two can bring? Because a calamity will rise suddenly upon the those given to change. Those of the wicked evildoers, their lamps will be put out. It is not good to show partiality in judgment. Oh, I think I skipped something. Yeah, going back. Verse 23, these things also belong to the wise. It is not good to show partiality in judgment. Ooh. <clears throat> he who says to the wicked, you are righteous, him the people will curse. Nations will abhor him. Abhor, which is hate. Curse or rebuke. Verse 25, but those who rebuke the wicked will have delight. And a good blessing will come upon them. He who gives a right answer kisses the lips. Prepare your outside work and make it fit for yourself in the field. And afterward, build your house. We're not working in the field enough. My bed is shaking right now. Man, my bed is definitely shaking. I haven't read the Bible like this and actually felt like I've agreed to it in a really long time on any level. It's been a long time since I've agreed with any of it and now my bed is shaking. I don't know what's going on. But um in verse 27 when I was reading prepare your outside work and make it fit for yourself in the field and afterward build your house. <sighs> make yourself fit your fit for work in the field, we're supposed to be growing fruits and vegetables. We're all supposed to be in the field. We're supposed to be taking care of nature and the earth. Nobody's doing that. California's burning. I don't know what we can do to help or what I can do. I want to find out what I can do to help something do good and make some kind of change. Verse 28. Do not be a witness against your neighbor without cause. Don't fight or stand against your neighbor if you don't have a reason, basically. For would you deceive with your own lips? You're going to deceive people with your lips, it's saying? Like, don't do that. Verse 29, do not say, I will do to him just as he has done to me. Do not say, 
I will do to him as he has done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. According to his work, you will be rendered blessings or curse. Basically, I will render to the man according to his work. Verse 30, I went by the field of the lazy man, oh man, that is my biggest, if it's a sin, I'm go and if I'm going to hell, then it would be for laziness, because it's really hard for me to get out of laziness, I've been struggling it for, struggling with it for seven years, but I've been receiving visions in the meantime. I went by the field of the lazy man, and by the vineyard of the man devoid of understanding, ooh, that sounds like me. I've been having a really hard time understanding why God, uh, you know, permitted evil and had his prophets do horrible things. So it sounds like me. It's like, I'm void, devoid of understanding. I'm a lazy person. And there it was, all overgrown with thorns. Its surface was covered with nettles. Its stone wall was broken down. When I saw it, I considered... <laughs> When I saw it, I considered it well. I looked on it and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So shall your poverty come like a prowler, and your need like an armed man. Oh my god. That's a warning to me. So many of us uh, deal with laziness. It's such a hard habit to get out of. And it says that if we do, if we rest, sleep, eat, and are completely lazy, the vines will grow thorns in our life. Not only on an actual bush or tree or plant physically, but in our life, we're going to grow thorns of problems. And so shall our poverty come like a prowler in verse 34. And your need like an armed man. But um, who showed me this was not the Jesus that claims to be Lucifer, but it's the real Messiah, which is um, different from Lucifer claiming to be Christ. Um, the real Messiah told me that this is the word of God, showed me part of the Bible, and told me to not share my visions at the moment, but just to share the word. And so I, I'm going ahead and um, doing this. And I'm imagining him sitting right next to me. And he's been speaking to me in my mind. Telepathically, I could see him and he's speaking. And at first I heard Nathaniel, the book of Nathaniel. Um, chapter 24, verse 6 through 16, but I couldn't find it. I found Proverbs 24, 6 through 16 and he pointed and he said, read that, the word of God. Then shall your iniquities be destroyed. And he pointed up towards heaven and he said, and I, and I imagine like this blue light shaking heaven above. And he said, that's the, and you will find your way to the eternal heaven or I will show you the way. He gave me a hug. This is the, the reason why I'm sharing this as he told me to, because he gave me a hug in my part of my vision. He said I can share this part, but not the rest of it. And he said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so I'm sharing this message as he told me to share this with the nations and with, with all people on my channel and in person. So... This is a message. I'm not a Christian. I'm not going to claim to know everything. Or to be right about everything. I'm seeking truth, eternal truth, as much as I can. And that's it.